Everybody, Pastor Tim here, and uh, we are traveling once again to another part of the world to learn about Christmas things. And uh, I can't think of a Christmasier place, I don't even know if that's a word, but a better place to talk about Christmas traditions than where it all started 2,000 years ago in Bethlehem. And I'm not talking about Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, I'm talking about Bethlehem, Palestine. And I've got my good friend, Pastor Mitri, here with me. And uh, Mitri, first of all, thanks for joining us. It's so good to have you. Great to be with you, Tim. So Mitri and I have known each other uh, for uh, 15 years or more. Uh, we've certainly known of each other before that. I had a chance um, probably about 15, 16 years ago to be in Palestine, in Bethlehem, and we did a church service together at Mitri's church at the time, Christmas Lutheran Church in Bethlehem. And uh, it's still one of the highlights of any trips I've ever made to Israel and uh, to Palestine to have been with your people uh, and our people praying together and, and the great work that you were doing there. And we're going to talk about Christmas Lutheran Church here in a moment. Uh, but Mitri, could you give us just a little bit of uh, an understanding of Bethlehem itself? I think people oftentimes think of it being in Israel, but it's not Israel. and um, uh, so give us a sense of where Bethlehem is and the current situation for you uh, in 2020. Yeah, actually, uh, uh, Bethlehem uh, is not anymore the little town uh, that we think about when we uh, think of the Christmas story. Uh, it's, uh, it's a big town to, uh, today. Uh, we have um, around... Um, 30,000 people living in Bethlehem itself. And with the neighboring cities, we talk about uh, 60,000 people. And uh, the larger Bethlehem government, we have over 200,000 people. Wow. Uh, so, and unfortunately, uh, uh, Bethlehem uh, today is still suffering under Israel occupation. Uh, if you come to our city, you will see the city is surrounded from three sides by uh, a high wall, concrete wall, built by Israel that is uh, 25 foot high. Uh, and basically it's eight square miles where we can move freely uh, with our cars. It's, it's, uh, uh, other than that, everything is blocked uh, or you have to go through uh, Israeli checkpoints. Um, Half of the Palestinian Christian community lives in Bethlehem. Uh, and so uh, this is really where, where the, the bulk of the Palestinian Christian community in the West Bank are living. And this is why I think it's so important for Christianity uh, to keep Christians here, because otherwise, you know, the Holy Land will become something like a theme park, uh, a kind of old Disneyland, but without worshiping uh, uh, Christians. Uh, we have uh, uh, many denominations, Christian denominations in Bethlehem. Um, we have Orthodox, we have Catholics, different kinds of Orthodox uh, uh, and different uh, Protestant churches, including uh, Christmas Lutheran Church that I used to pastor for 30 years. 
I had, uh, as I mentioned uh, a moment ago, I had the privilege of leading a tour group there actually a couple times. And uh, the, the work that, uh, that you had been doing there, and it continues to go, wasn't just a Lutheran congregation. You were doing schools, you were doing art schools. And, um, and now you are uh, carrying on, you're not the pastor there anymore, but you also do an important ministry that was birthed out of that congregation. So tell us what you're doing these days. Yeah, you know, um, uh, we felt uh, from the beginning that as church, we cannot just uh, be uh, confined within uh, walls, the church walls in this case. But as church, we have to reach out to the larger society. And the question is how to reach out uh, and what difference can we make? Um, and uh, so uh, we started with a school uh, from kindergarten uh, through high school. Uh, uh, and later we felt uh, that uh, God was calling us to start the first uh, university in Palestine. You know, in Palestine, we have 47 universities, mm. believe it or not. None of them focus on the arts. Uh, but we felt this is really our call is to focus on the art. So what we focus on is music, uh, art, uh, dance, theater, uh, film, uh, design, uh, interior design, graphic design. Uh, because first of all, this is important for ministry. I mean, imagine a church without music. I mean, I know at Grace you have great uh, music uh, uh, there. Uh, or imagine a church without art. Uh, uh, um, but also uh, it is important for us as Palestinians for our identity because uh, culture is very much connected to identity. And so how can we really uh, work on a dynamic identity for our people? This was an important issue. But also art is important for therapy and for people who have been living under occupation for so long. Uh, you know, I, I have been through 11 wars Wow. And, you know, with every war, you have traumatization, etc. And art is maybe the best uh, therapy uh, for people who are traumatized. And so uh, this is why I think this important ministry is needed. And last but not least, uh, art and culture provides a new way of communication. You know, when our students, uh, when they make a film, uh, that film tells a much better story than giving a lecture. Uh, and so now we have all of these young Palestinians really uh, making films, and many of these films are really uh, getting noticed. They are getting uh, international awards. And so uh, it's spreading the word again. And this is what Bethlehem uh, stands for. You know, Bethlehem stands for a place where the good news went out of it. And this is our commitment still. So Christmas Lutheran Church is walking distance from the traditional site uh, that is honored uh, for the birthplace of Jesus, Church of the Nativity. Um, and I think there may be some of us who have seen uh, at least news clips of the big gatherings that often happen in Nativity Square at Christmas time. But tell us a little bit about Christmas uh, in Bethlehem. Um, you know, it's generated a lot by tourism. It's not going to be this year, uh, I'm guessing, with COVID hitting. But what are some of the, let's start with your family, for example. What are some traditions that you've had uh, in your family to help you get ready for the birth of Jesus and for Christmas? Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, many things. First of all, I mean, um, it starts with decorating uh, our home. Uh, uh, with different uh, decorations. Um, and uh, in our case, I like always to gather decoration from different countries. Uh, the biggest collection we have actually is from South Korea, interestingly enough. Yeah. Uh, but we have also things made in Bethlehem because Bethlehem is well known for the olive wood uh, you know, nativity, uh, etc., candles, uh, and so that is that is one piece. 
the other piece, uh, you know, being uh, uh, a pastor, uh, it's important that in the school, etc., uh, we have uh, Christmas plays that we uh, do with the kids. So that takes lots of time actually to prepare. Uh, unfortunately, again, this year we will not be able to do it. Right. Uh, uh, another thing usually, uh, um, there are uh, especially like cookies that uh, Christians here do for Christmas. Uh, and uh, you have uh, cookies that are filled with dates and cookies that are filled with walnuts. Mm. Uh, and so these are made home usually. Uh, that takes time, especially to decorate them. Uh, uh, by hand, so they are really handmade, uh, piece by piece. Uh, that's that's a very uh, uh, famous Palestinian uh, tradition. Uh, and then uh, uh, on uh, on Christmas Eve, uh, usually it's for us uh, as Lutherans uh, the most important thing uh, was always the uh, the multilingual service we do. Uh, we do service in our uh, church uh, in three main languages, which is Arabic, English, and German. But then we have, uh, you know, so many expatriates that live in Bethlehem and Jerusalem. And then we have prayers in so many languages. So you hear Japanese and you hear Korean and you hear Chinese and you hear, uh, you know, native languages from Africa. Uh, you hear Indonesian, etc. I mean, it's really, you feel what does it mean to belong to a worldwide uh, church and to pray together, especially the Lord's Prayer with all of these languages. Uh, you feel like in heaven already, you know, yeah. uh, with all of the languages. But for the city in Bethlehem, yes. uh, Christmas Eve is, is a very special day because... You have all the scouts from all the West Bank. They come uh, to walk uh, and perform through the streets of Bethlehem. So people stand really uh, in the street for like three hours, just watching one scout after the other, passing through the narrow streets of, of the city. And uh, behind them then comes the patriarch, um, uh, the patriarchs uh, now comes on in a car. Uh, previously, they, he used to come on a, you know, on a caravan. Uh, and then you have all the dignitaries of the cities. Uh, they are be, be, before him. They, they, they enter the city before him. And he's basically the last one. Uh, and that is a big, that's a big thing. So, so people really spent from like 11 a.m. until 3 p.m. on the streets in Bethlehem with all of this uh, music. Uh, and in the evening then th there is uh, at the Church of the Nativity, the midnight service, which again is an international service and is attended by our president uh, and many dignitaries. The Christmas day itself is the family day after we go usually to the service, uh, we have a lunch with a larger family. So sometimes if you have a larger family, you have like 30, 40, 50 people uh, having lunch together, usually at home, but recently more and more uh, in, in restaurants. Mm. Um, besides, uh, I mean, uh, nowadays, uh, the lighting of the Christmas tree at Manger Square, uh, that is done usually in early December, is a big thing now that our prime minister comes to that uh, and we have thousands of people coming just for, for the lighting of the tree. So the lighting of the tree in recent three years is playing a much bigger role than it used uh, to play. So... And you've been to the United States many, many times. Your your daughter's studying over here. So you know that, um, you know, Americans and I think our friends in England, kind of the same thing, really big on Christmas lights, of course. Uh, a lot of Christmas music that isn't necessarily 
uh, Jesus centered. It's it's winter centered, right. so on. And Santa Claus uh, has Santa Claus has some of this secular music uh, permeated its way into Bethlehem. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, maybe in the last 10, 15 years, uh, you can see the commercialization of Christmas. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when I was uh, a child, that was really not the case. Uh, everything was much simpler. Okay, we will get, uh, we were getting uh, a Christmas present, mm -hmm. but the Christmas present were very simple. We were happy about anything we got. Uh, and usually it used to be a cloth or something like that that we could use. Uh, now, unfortunately, there is lots of plastic made in China that is, uh, <laughs> you know, given to kids uh, as Christmas present, which is really harming. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's not good at all. Uh, uh, and so as pastor for me, it was always important uh, to think of creative ideas for present that are not really uh, commercial. Uh, regarding music, uh, uh, we, we don't have this, what I call the secular, uh, many of the secular Christmas uh, hymns that are uh, very spread in the US, but we have many of the traditional uh, Christmas hymns that also we sing at church uh, like a little town of Bethlehem, right. uh, or away in a manger, uh, or a silent night, yeah. uh, that are really, uh, you know, uh, centered around the real story, and not about jingle bells or something. <laughs> yeah, right, uh, right. Uh, um, and uh, so... Um, but we have also our own uh, uh, Arabic uh, Oriental Christmas hymns that we love to sing as well. So we have a, a hybrid uh, model, basically. So uh, for those who have never been to the Church of the Nativity, uh, for some people, it's a very sacred moment. For others, it's kind of a disappointment. Uh, because it, there's a church built over it and you climb down these stairs and it's, it's all become a shrine. Um, right. But yet the, the sacred moment isn't so much about the spot, but really that the moment happened, of course. So you have to try to remind yourself there's a story behind this. Right. My favorite place to go, uh, besides Christmas Lutheran, of course, is out to Shepherd's Fields. And that seems to be a bit more realistic uh, and uh, to get a sort of, you get this beautiful sense of Bethlehem for one thing from there and the fields. And um, so for you as a, 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 a person who lives in Bethlehem, do you go to the church in the nativity every year to commemorate Christmas? Or have you sort of said, yeah, I seen it once. I got the t-shirt, that's it. And I'm good. No, usually I go only if, if, uh, if there is, uh, uh, you know, uh, an event or something um, where I need to be there or I have a, a delegation that I need to lead uh, through the, the church. Um, the priests there are, are good friends. So I go there to meet with them, not necessarily in the church, but in their office, or we have a meal together, uh, things like that. But actually, uh, for me, the, 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 the special place that reminds me of Christmas uh, is, and I'm not sure, Tim, if you, if, if you were there, uh, you know, we have a gift shop where we sell crafts that yeah. our students and others produce. But beneath that gift shop, when we built the gift shop, we discovered an ancient cave uh, that is a thousand years old. Uh, and we left it as is because if you are in that, uh, in, in that cave, you can exactly imagine how it was at the time of Jesus. It's a natural cave, uh, uh, which the people with time, they just put a wall uh, 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 just to close it with a door and a window. Uh, and it has like uh, two different levels you have the high level, that is where the room is, 
Okay. Uh, and this is where usually a Palestinian family at the time of Jesus, until the 18th century, how they used to live, uh, which is, you know, it's one room, that's the whole house. So during uh, uh, night, uh, you have mattresses that you roll out and you sleep on them. In the morning, you roll them together, you put them in a corner, and that becomes the sitting room, that becomes the kitchen, that becomes everywhere, everything. And then there is the lower level because in winter you had to bring your sheep into your the sheep into the into the house, but they are put in a lower right uh, okay. uh, level. And between these two levels, there is like one stair. Uh, and actually, this is how you have to imagine the story of Christmas when uh, Luke says there was no place at the end, it does not mean that there was no place at the hotel because that's not what, what Bethlehem was, but there was no place in this main room. Right. Okay. And so the only place they were able to put Jesus in the manger, which usually is put on that stair because you have on the lower level the sheep, you have the family living up there, uh, and at the time of Jesus, they were extended families. You have in this small cave, maybe 15 people living there. Mm. So to host Mary, Joseph, and the kids, the only way to put Jesus was there. And so you can really get into that story. And so that's for me the, the, the very special place uh, if I want to commemorate Christmas. And we have there like uh, meditation services around Christmas, uh, et cetera. Well, all right, that's my next my next trip. That's what we're doing. Okay. <laughs> we we postponed our latest trip now twice. So so I'll send you the dates when we're when our we're coming back. But that sounds fantastic. Um, Actually, it, I think you were supposed to be this week here. Yes, we were. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, and then it was uh, yeah. So we've we've canceled a couple times now or postponed, not canceled. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but we'll get there. We'll get there because we we love Israel and we've got a group of people ready to go. So, Mitri, th this has been so helpful. It, it, I think it paints this this wonder filled picture for our people, especially this last bit with um, what the cave looked like. But how do you, in in your native tongue, how do you say Merry Christmas? Eid um, Milad Said. Okay, say that one more time. Eid. Milad Said. Excellent. Well, that's a great way to end. Mitri, thank you so much. We appreciate this little tour of Christmas in Bethlehem. And uh, Merry Christmas to you, your family, and to all of our friends there at uh, Christmas Lutheran. Thank you. To you all also at Grace and to the family. Thanks so much. Yeah.